everybody, it's Abby here with Pastor Jed. Hey KMNAS kids, welcome back to another week and another object lesson with Abby and I. Thank you, Abby, for the introduction. We're glad you're here with us this week. We want to talk with you uh, real quick about temptation and sin in our lives. We all probably know somebody that's uh, living uh, the opposite of how God wants us to live according to his word that we find in scripture. Uh, we too are faced with temptation often to disobey God's will in our lives. We're all tempted to put our own desires first, and we call that sin. When we give in to temptation, we allow sin to control our lives. Let's look at King David out of the Old Testament for just a second. We know that King David was a great leader. He was a great man, and we look up to him for many reasons. One of those reasons is the fact that God said he was a man after his own heart. That's pretty impressive when God says that David was a man after his own heart. And that's why we look up to David. But we know when we read through the Old Testament that David gave in the temptation and he sinned. When he saw Bathsheba, Bathsheba, he gave in the temptation and put his own desire first and forgot that he was supposed to be pleasing God. King David saw Bathsheba and wanted her for his wife. He did not care that she was already married to another man. King David even had Bathsheba's husband Uriah killed just so David could marry Bathsheba. Just like King David, you and I face temptation too. Sometimes the temptation seems small, particularly when we think about David and what he did. Our temptation seems pretty small, but we forget that those small temptations can lead to big consequences. We might be tempted to tell a lie or to act in a cruel manner or to steal something that belongs to somebody else or maybe we're tempted to gossip about somebody. But whatever it is, those small temptations, if we don't ask for forgiveness and make them right with God, can lead to big consequences. There are a lot of ways that we can be tempted. The question is, will you give in to temptation? Abby's gonna share a uh, passage of scripture, and then I wanna show you this object lesson uh, talking about showing temptation and what it looks like in our life. What does Proverbs 11.6 tell us, Abby? The unfaithful are trapped by evil desires. So the unfaithful are trapped by evil desires. This milk jar is going to represent a trap. These matches are going to represent temptation. And here you might have plenty of these laying around a week after Easter. This egg is going to represent us, right? This is who we are. We're this egg, Abby. And see, God does not want us to uh, be trapped by anything. Uh, no, not by evil desires for sure. And you can see here, this egg does not fit into the jar. I'm pushing down on that egg. It is not going to work. So we're not intended to be enslaved and trapped by evil desires. However, if we don't uh, ask for forgiveness and if we allow temptation to uh, begin to burn in our lives like this match will represent, some serious consequences happen. This is what happens with a little lie or maybe being cruel, just a little temptation. It doesn't seem like a big deal. And when it falls down into that jar and the egg is placed over that jar, it doesn't probably do a whole lot, right? That egg is still not going to fit into this jar. However, if we don't, uh, if we're not careful and we don't do what 2 Timothy 2, 12 tells us, what's it say, Abby? Free from sin and follow righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who are called on the Lord out of a pure heart. 2 Timothy 2.12 tells us to flee from sin. And if we don't get away from sin, one sin and temptation is going to lead to another temptation and another temptation. And next thing you know, that sin is going to uh, burn out of control. So Abby, let's hope that this works and this fire takes place, takes hold inside of this jar. And when I do that, can you place that egg onto the jar. Here is a fire. It is going to burn out of control. Abby placed that egg on the jar. Thank you. This is what happens when that fire begins to burn out of control uh, in our lives. It begins to suck us into this trap. And look what's happening. The fire and the smoke and the warmth pulls that egg right into this trap. Now that egg's not coming out of there. Look at that. It's stuck, right? It's stuck in that trap. But we know that we can get free from that trap. Jesus Christ gave his very life uh, on a cross and he was buried and three days later he rose again all so that we can be freed from 
sin, right, Abby? And so what does James 4, 7 tell us? Therefore, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So together, according to Timothy, 2 Timothy, together we should be uh, working on righteousness and, and faith in our lives and being kind and peaceful and loving. And then when we submit to God, when we understand uh, his will, we read his word and we pray together and we help each other out, uh, the devil will flee from us and we will be freed from sin. So hopefully uh, you, you uh, enjoyed this object lesson that Abby and I had. We want you to know that uh, we love you, we miss you, and uh, we're praying for you. And I want to pray for you right now. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for uh, your word. Thank you for the fact that we can flee from sin uh, because of Jesus' sacrifice on that cross. And I pray that for Abby and myself and all the kids that are tuning in right now, that collectively we'd uh, continue to encourage one another, uh, supporting each other, and making sure that we are all uh, not only fleeing from sin, but that we are uh, running towards uh, righteous lives, lives that are filled with faith, love, and peace. Thank you, Father, for this object lesson, for this time together. We ask all this now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thanks, kids. We'll see you next week. What do you say, Abby? Bye. Bye.